Hello, today we're going to look at Exodus chapter 4. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me, or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, Throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground, and it became a snake, and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake, and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that you may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. Then the Lord said, Put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak. When he took it out, it was leprous like snow. Now put it back into your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak. And when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. Then the Lord said, If they do not believe you, or pay attention to the first miraculous sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs, or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Moses said to the Lord, O Lord, I have never been, been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servants. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, who gave man his mouth? What's, what makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak, and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, O Lord, please send someone else to do it. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses, and he said, what about your brother Aaron, the Levites? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you, and his heart will be glad when he sees you. You shall speak to him, and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak, and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you, and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. But take this staff in your hand, so you can perform miraculous signs with it. Then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Let me go back to my people in Egypt, and see if any of them are still alive. Jethro said, Go as you wish. Now the Lord said to Moses in Midian, Go back to Egypt. For all the men who wanted to kill you are dead. So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey, and started back to Egypt. And he took the staff of God in his hand. The Lord said to Moses, When you return to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders I have given you the power to do. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then say to Pharaoh, This is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son, and I told you, let my son go, so he may worship me. But you refuse to let him go, so I will kill your firstborn son. At a lodging place on the way, the Lord met Joseph, met Moses, met Moses and was about to kill him. But Zipporah took a flint knife, cut off her son's foreskin, and touched Moses' feet with it. Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me, she said. So the Lord let him alone. At that time she said, bridegroom of blood, referring to circumcision. The Lord said to Aaron, go into the desert to meet Moses. So he met Moses at the mountain of God and kissed him. 
Then Moses told Aaron everything the Lord had sent him to say, and also about all the miraculous signs he had commanded him to perform. Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of Israel, and Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. He also performed the signs before the people, and they believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped him. Well, reading from Exodus, we see here that God is speaking to Moses. He's got a specific task for Moses to do, to, to lead his people out of slavery from Egypt into the Promised Land. And Moses doubts, he questions God and he puts lots of obstacles in the way of God and says, well, I can't do this. Uh, I'm not the right man. I'm not a good speaker. Um, I'm slow of speech. Surely you can find someone else. And God proves himself as a powerful, miracle-working God. Throws his staff on the ground, uh, turns into a snake, picks it up then uh, by the tail and... Um, I'm told that that's not a good thing to do with a snake. You normally grab it by the head, although I'm not expert in either thing. And when he grabbed the tail, uh, the, star, the, the snake turned back into the staff. He puts his hand inside his cloak and it turns uh, leprous, takes his hand out and uh, it's completely healed and restored. But God uh, calls Moses to go back to the people. And eventually he's obedient and he goes. And he starts to share with people what God has laid on his heart. And people begin to listen. And we see this as we go uh, through the passage. And right at the end in verse 29 and 30 and 31, Moses and Aaron brought together the elders of the Israelites. There must have been many, many elders. And Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses, and they performed signs and wonders amongst the people. Seems a little bit like the early church in Acts. Uh, we, see, we see God at work then, as he was then, and all the way through the Bible and through to today. And when they performed the signs and wonders and they shared what God had said, the elders believed. And when they heard that the Lord had concern for them, they bowed down and worshipped. And I believe that when God calls us to do something, when God calls us to do something that's greater and bigger than us, as we begin to use that gift, as we begin to share with other people, and they receive us and accept us, and the signs and wonders will accompany and follow what God has called you and I to do. It's a good reading. It's a reading that's worth perhaps reading again. Um, but thank you for watching today, thank you for listening, and um, I hope you have a really good day.